Okay, so we're going to have a carboxylic acid quiz now, guys. And again, I'm going to ask you 10 questions based on the carboxylic acid poster that you've hopefully completed for me. So I would have the poster open in front of you if I were you. After I've asked each question, I'm going to ask you to pause the video to give you a little bit of a chance in order to think about what the answer should be and then play again, which should reveal the answer. Okay, so off we go. Question number one to start with. What will be the visual observation when carrying out the following reaction? So here we have um, ethanol becoming ethanoic acid using potassium dichromate and acid under reflux conditions. What would you see during this reaction? So we'll pause the video now and have a think and then I'll come back with the answer. Okay, so hopefully you've got a visual observation in mind. And what we would see here is an orange to green color change. Now I've been a little bit sneaky here because I've only showed you the starting material of potassium dichromate. Because ethanol to ethanoic acid is an oxidation, the potassium dichromate would itself get reduced. And I often show this a bit like this from Cr207 to minus and H plus to Cr3 plus. And that's the orange to green color change we'd see. Ethanol has no color and ethanoic acid is also colorless. So the only color change we'd see is the reduction of the potassium dichromate to chromium three. Okay, hopefully that didn't cut you out. Question two. Can you name the following carboxylic acid? Now it's a bit of a monster, but try and think how we would go about naming this. Pause the video now and we'll come back with the answer in a second. Right, so what have we got here then? So when we're naming a carboxylic acid, the first carbon number one is always the one where the acid group is on. So that's carbon number one. This is carbon number two. This is carbon number three. Now where do we go now? Do we go onwards to carbon four or do we go up? Well, hopefully, you know to follow the longest chain. And here is our longest chain. So we need to go up carbon number four, carbon number five. So one, two, three, four, five, meth, eth, probute, pent. So it's based on pentanoic acid. And we have a methyl group at carbon number three. So three methyl pentanoic acid is the name for that monster okay question number three then guys can you name the two missing starting materials in the reaction shown below so we have ethanoic acid here and these o's are indicating oxi oxidation processes so you can oxidize something here to become ethanoic acid, or you can oxidize something here to being ethanoic acid. And the difference is here, this is twice as much oxidation as required here than as there is here. So there are two possible products that you could oxidize to become carboxylic acid, but one would need twice as much oxidation as the other. Can you think what those would be here? And I want you to name them, please. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to ask you to pause the video for a second now, check your poster, and see if you can identify what these two products would be. Okay, so hopefully you found that section in your poster, and you have hopefully identified this as two carbons. But here, it's an alcohol. An alcohol, primary alcohol, would need two lots of oxidation to become a carboxylic acid. On the other hand, over here, again, we would need two carbons, but the functional group is a little bit more oxidized than an alcohol. And what we're dealing with here is an aldehyde. And so what we have here is F and Al. So that needs one lot of oxidation to become ethanoic acid. Whereas over here, we have F and O, and this needs 
two lots of oxidation to become a carboxylic acid. Okay, question number four. I'd like you to balance the following formula equation, please. All you've got to do is balance it like you would any other equation. It is the reaction of a propanoic acid with sodium carbonate. It is sodium propanoate, carbon dioxide and water. I'd like you to make that balance for me, please. Pause the video, have a think about it and balance it for me. Okay, right, so key here is that there are two sodiums over here. And therefore, this is the sodium here, and there's only one of them. So you are going to need two of these sodium propanoate molecules being formed. And if we're forming two of them, then we're going to need to also have two propanoic acids in the first place. So we need two there as well. And hopefully everything's okay now. One carbon here, one carbon here, two sodiums. We know there are two sodiums here now. One, two, three, four, five oxygens. One, two, three. Sorry, my bad. Four oxygens here, five, six, seven oxygen in total. Four oxygens here, five, six, seven oxygens in total. There we go, sorted now. And the hydrogens, oh gosh, there's lots of them, isn't there? Three, four, five, six, twelve hydrogens in total. Three, four, five, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go. All sorted, balanced. Okay, question number five. Can you name the following ester? Okay, so esters are made from carboxylic acids and alcohols. I'd like you to name this ester for me, guys. So, give it a pause, have a scribble, and I'll come back with an answer in a second. Right, now then, made from alcohols and carboxylic acid. And this is the part that will come from the carboxylic acid. You can tell that from the fact that there's the double bond O there. And that must have come from a carboxylic acid with one carbon on it. So it must have come from methanoic acid. So that gets referred to as methan O8. Methan O8. And this must be the alcohol section and that must have come from ethanol so it gets named ethyl methanoate ethyl methanoate is the name of that ester quite tricky to name esters um, but you won't be asked anything too complicated as long as you can name the basic ones okay question number six Right, what visible observation can be made from the following reaction? What visible observation can be made from the following reaction? So this is propanoic acid with sodium hydrogen carbonate, giving us sodium propanoate and water and carbon dioxide. You will be able to see something happening in this reaction because it's actually used as a test for identifying carboxylic acids and you'd be able to see it if you did it in the test tube, you'd be able to see something happen. Pause the video, have a think about what that would be, and we'll come back with an answer in a second. Okay, right, so what are you going to see here? You add meth propanoic acid, it's got no colour to it. Sodium hydrogen carbonate solution would have no colour. Sodium carbonate would have no uh, Sodium propanoate, rather, would have no colour. Obviously, water is colourless. The only thing you'd see here is CO2. And you'd see it in the form of bubbles. You would see fizzing. If you had any carboxylic acid there, you'd see some sort of fizzing. And that is used as a test to identify the presence of carboxylic acids. Right, question number seven. Can you name the missing reagent here? We've got another esterification. This is an ester. It's ethyl ethanoate, and it gets formed from ethanol and something else. Can you pause the video, check out your ester section on your poster, and think about what that missing reagent might be? Pause it now. Okay, so hopefully you have identified this missing reagent as the following molecule. 
we should be this bit of an away from there and hopefully you can name that molecule as ethanoic acid so an alcohol and an acid give us an ester alcohol is ethanol the acid in this case is ethanoic acid and as i mentioned this would be ethyl ethanoates okay question number eight now i want you to complete the following passage for me please it's about esters and it's about separating them from the reaction mixture they came from hit pause and have a think about what those three gaps should be okay right so you've had a look in your poster hopefully and you've identified these three gaps esters have a something boiling point than bulk carboxylic acid what we're after here is lower boiling points because they don't have any OH groups on board they can't hydrogen bond with each other so their boiling points tend to be lower and we can use that to separate them lower boiling points than both carboxylic acid and well what else is going to make an ester alcohols uh, so esters have a lower boiling points than both the carboxylic acid and alcohols which are used to make them make them sorry about that as a result, we can use what separation technique? It's distillation. We can use distillation to separate esters from the reaction mixture as they are formed. Okay. Question number nine. Can you draw the structure and name the missing product in this reaction? So we have ethanoic acid plus sodium hydroxide giving us our missing product and water I want you to draw the structure and name it please pause it now and have a think okay so draw the structure right so the deal here is this is an acid it's going to donate this O8 this H plus ion this is a base it's going to accept that H plus ion and as a result they're going to form water so our sodium and the rest of that molecule are going to join together to give us this structure. And this is called sodium ethanoate. Sodium ethanoate. Right, final question. Question number 10. Okay. What type of reaction is the following? So, more esters, lots of esters with carboxylic acid. We've got ethanoic acid and methanol giving us methyl ethanoate and water. What do we classify that reaction as being? Pause the video and have a think about it, and I'll come back with the answer in a second. Okay, so. The deal here is to do with this water. Because we have lost water from the molecule and water has been formed in the reaction, we refer to ester formation as a condensation reaction. So maybe you might have put esterification down, perhaps? Which wouldn't be a ridiculous answer. But officially, we refer to these types of reactions as condensation reactions. So there we go, 10 questions on carboxylic acids. Hopefully you got 10 out of 10. If you didn't, you need to use it to identify where you went wrong and to rectify those gaps in your knowledge.